It's not easy being a casual player of anything. You find yourself across the table from someone who's played a game to death. You're just praying they're not complete wannies and have at least a passing interest in both of you having fun. It's a malady I'm far too familiar with, being a jack of all games and master of none. Still, no matter what game you play, and this is especially true with war games where you roll a bunch of dice, you've got access to all the raw data you could possibly need before you even get to the table. Data that can give you a head start and an edge over anyone just relying on experience. So what does that look like in the grim dark, and why should you care? Well, it takes time to learn the nuances of the Warhammer 40k and its various game types and missions. It takes XP for you understand, to understand the ebb and flow of a tabletop miniature war game. When should you push for an objective? When is it time to play the long game and so on and so forth? There aren't really many shortcuts in that regard. But what you can do to bypass noob status is to get to know the raw numbers, statistics and breakpoints that underpin success and failure. So how do you stack the odds in your favour in terms of damage output and mitigation without even getting into the realm of worrying if you deployed everyone optimally or left your favourite unit right in the kill zone? The most obvious place to start is with the strength versus toughness table. What are the key toughness characteristics I'm going up against and how do I load out and choose my targets from a weapon strength perspective most optimally? For this we need to categorise the units every army has access to, and typically speaking what toughness they'll bring to the table. The first category, and by far the most voluminous, is infantry. Most things that foot slog on two or more legs are going to have the infantry keyword, and these units will generally have between 3 and 5 toughness. Your sweet spots so that you're wounding on a 3 up then are strength 4, 5 and 6, and if you're greedy and chasing a 2 up, 6, 8 and 10. Seriously, do not sleep on the weight of probability you'll skew in your favour just making sure you have as much of your firepower at one strength greater than your opponent's toughness. If you roll in 10 dice then on average you're improving from 5 successes to just under 7. And as you can imagine, across the length of a game, that's really going to add up. In this current edition, where you get access to your whole data sheet and you don't have to pay extra for it, you're going to want to pick the unit or weapons where a choice is given that hits the above breakpoint on the nose. If you're going up against an army that's rocking a bunch of toughness 4, and you have the choice of a strength 5 or strength 7 weapon, Dollars to donuts, you're having to sacrifice something to get that extra sense strength 7. Be it extra hits or suffering penalties because of the weapon type. So do not hesitate in taking the strength 5 weapon and let the law of averages <laughs> do the rest. Don't fret as much about getting to the 2 up break point with your infantry killer guns unless you can do so without sacrificing anything. Using the previous example however, when you have the choice of taking a strength 7 or 8 weapon against toughness 4, then it's the obvious choice to take the 8. So whilst infantry might take all the limelight and the most of your attention, the second unit type you need to consider is vehicles. Now these little oft mechanical piggies have some subtypes to consider. But, broadly speaking, vehicles range most commonly anywhere between toughness 6 all the way up to toughness 13. It's at this point in the toughness spectrum that you're not always then going to be able to bank on rolling 3 ups to wound. So just remember that every statistical breakpoint is important. If you can't get higher strength, just aim for equal, and thus a 4 up. And then when we get to the tippy top of this range, try and avoid the need to roll a 6 up. The lowest toughness of vehicle will tend to be your walkers. Think of them more mostly as mechanised infantry, with the usual range between 7 and 10 toughness. You've then got generic vehicles, those that don't necessarily walk, fly and are not titanic. Now this is where you'll find the bulk of enemy vehicles residing, and as such they have the largest range. On average though, these will be in the toughness 8 to 12 range. 
Next up is your units that can fly, which are pretty well analogous with ground-based vehicles, but those specifically classified as aircraft, you'll often find in the 8 to 10 range. Finally, and the least likely you'll encounter, is Titanic vehicles. This is where you'll get your 12 and up toughness units. So, the best bet when we get to these lofty heights is just to simply focus on volume of attacks. Trying to avoid having half the strength of the unit's toughness, and thus a 6 up to wound, and then just prioritise weapon profiles with a reasonable armour penetration value. But we'll get to AP in a hot minute. Another thing to consider is that your expectations have to be moderated when targeting vehicles. As such, if you can't reliably and consistently achieve a 3 up wound roll, then a secondary goal is to at least try and ensure you get equal the strength, or avoid being half the strength, because, and apologies Captain Obvious, mitigating failure can be as impactful as increasing the chance of success. The three remaining categories in no particular order are Monsters, a category reserved to oversized models and which can be found in the same ballpark as mid to high end vehicles, between 9 and 12 toothness. Mounted units are next, generally riding on the back of something, I think cavalry or something lightly armoured that floats above the ground, these usually get a 1 toughness buff compared to their infantry equivalents, and so expect between 4 and 6 here. You've then got beasts, generally one piece non-humanoid models, which mechanically speaking are a hybrid of infantry and mounted units, and so often have between 3 and 6 toughness. Finally then we have swarm units, which are few and far between, but these tend to be in the low toughness range 2 and 3, generally compensating then with more wounds than your rank and file infantry. So there goes your strength and toughness primer. The next most important opposed statistical check I want to talk about is armor penetration versus armor save. There's obviously a lot less variance in this category because saves of any kind are on a d6, but suffice it to say for you to be a happy camper as the attacker, you want to be forcing your opponent to be making 5 up saves. Everything below a 50% chance that your opponent fouls their save roll is a good place to be. That being said, unlike the strength and toughness table, armour penetration provides you with a linear benefit. That is, until the point further games become wasted. It's only when AP would reduce an armour save to an equivalent 8 plus that it becomes inefficient, barring obvious positive modifiers for the defending models but those instances are an outlier and peripheral concern. Now, there are some general armour save patterns found in each faction, although with a number range that has smaller confines, it can be harder to disseminate. But still, we can broadly break them down into the unit types we've already talked about. Non-character infantry are most commonly your baseline, so a 3-up save, which is what's found on Space Marine equivalents, would sway nicely in the attacker's favour if they had AP-2 weaponry. 4-up armour saves, like those found on the Tau, would then be looking for AP-1 against them. And the 5-up saves that can be seen on Astra Militarum are at that point then when you start to care less about AP and more about volume of fire. Just bear in mind that AP-3 or greater against 5-up armour saves is a waste. Similarly, with the 6-up saves that armies like Orcs have, we'll see you getting zero benefit from AP-2 or more, barring of course any modifiers. So once you identify that baseline armour save for your opponent, there isn't always significant variance to that with the rest of the force. As a general rule, characters, vehicles and monsters tend to have an increase to their armour save from that baseline of 1, sometimes 2. Obviously you can't go lower than 2 up saves, so there's only so much room to improve for armies that start with a baseline 3 up save. The remaining thing to consider before we move on though is the impact invulnerable saves have on all this. For example, quite often an invuln save, at least when it's actually worse than an armour save, will be a target number 2 higher than the respective armour save, which, if you'll follow my logic, enhances the efficiency of AP-2 over AP-3. 
There are exceptions to this rule like most things, but an invuln will almost always sit between 4 and 6. And you'll start to notice those patterns found in each army, which we may start exploring in upcoming videos. The last point I want you to consider then is your weapon's damage characteristic versus an enemy unit's wound count. With no damage over spear and 40k, with the exception being mortal wounds, it's important to try and align the amount of damage you're doling out with the amount of wounds on each unit. This is not to say that damage one weapons are bad, you're generally getting the most volume of attacks from these weapons, but if you're shooting at an enemy unit with two wound apiece, then damage two weapons are going to be commensurately better no matter which way you look at it. To provide any meaningful categorization and examples is a bit more tricky for this, as this is the element of 40k, at least in terms of characteristic profiles that has changed its ethos the most in the last couple of editions. A sliding scale of higher wound counts and higher damage profiles are the norm now, giving more room in the design space to balance things. Case in point, back in 7th edition, Space Marine Terminators used to have a 2 up armor save, but only one wound, so any save rolls of one meant bye bye for a supposedly elite unit. Now they still have their 2 up armor save, but 3 wounds to act as a cushion for bad dice rolls. Now the what weapons to take debate is further complicated by this need to align as best you can these two numbers. The main thing you're looking to avoid of course is overkill damage. You don't want to find yourself in a situation where you're rocking all sorts of 2 and 3 damage weapons and your opponent's army is a 1 wound sack of spuds. The thing is, to drill down to the meaningful data in this regard, you really need to do so on a faction by faction basis. So this whole sermon is really only scratching the surface. Put more succinctly, the most optimal attacks you can make are when the damage characteristic equals the number of wounds on the target. One damage is never bad per se, so long as your volume of firepower is in the lots of column. But what you're also looking for is a damage characteristic that is divisible by a whole number to the target's wound characteristic. So continuing this logic, 2 damage is comparably superior to 1 when attacking models with 4 or 6 wounds, but not quite as optimal against 3 and 5. And whilst a lot of this logic is right there front and centre, it's sometimes forgotten how easy it is for you to just collect a few pieces of information in preparation for a contest, and it taking you a long way towards success. If you play the odds in any game, you're well on your way to improving the outcome. And not only does everything we've talked about help you pick an appropriate loadout for your armies, it'll also help you better assess what units should target which enemy models once the battle commences. That's about enough number crunching for today, however, we've covered the general principles of this math based approach to army building. Next up, we'll start doing faction deep dives to give you an idea of the best tools to bring to bear whenever you face X, Y, or Z. Alas, I have been the voice in your head, and this video has ended. <laughs>